ਫਰਸਟ ਨੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਚਾਈਲਡ ਐਂਡ ਫੈਮਲੀ ਕੇਅਰਿੰਗ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਆਫ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਕੂਲ ਪੀੜਤਾਂ ਲਈ ਮੁਆਵਜ਼ੇ ਸਬੰਧੀ ਲੰਬੀ ਲੜਾਈ ਲੜੀ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਕੋਰਟ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਕੈਨੇਡੀਅਨ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਰਾਈਟਸ ਟਿਊਬੂਲਨ ਦੇ ਫੈਸਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਬਰਕਰਾਰ ਰੱਖਣ ਦੇ ਫੈਸਲੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਮੋਹਰ ਲਗਾ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਸਬੰਧੀ ਹੁਣ ਸਿੰਡੀ ਬਲੈਂਕ ਸਟੌਕ ਦੇ ਮਹਾਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਿਆਨ ਵੀ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ sure um so i mean we had some familiarity with the ring of fire region and the controversy around it and in particular what we were seeing and looking at mainly the environmental assessment processes and how they were playing out there was that there was quite a lot of um both indigenous opposition but also a lot of movement in the situation and you know because the students are interested in learning about um securities law when they're at law school and there's a lot of talk about environmental social and governance factors and how those are you know coming into play gaining much more significance with companies um the students were interested in taking a look at how that was playing out in this particular context and um we were surprised to see that you know over the period of disclosures that we looked at um the boilerplate language about the potential for indigenous claims to influence uh the projects was very uh stable right it, it was just kind of boilerplate it was the same over that period and what we were seeing on the ground was actually that things were pretty volatile and um things were shifting and uh first nations were making very specific claims about their opposition uh, to the projects and none of that was mentioned in the disclosures Ideally we would have regulators that would be enforcing those obligations to disclose. Um we're going to also need probably um courts to interpret what we mean when we say a material fact or a material change and you know what's required in those disclosures because I think you know the mm. public's expectation is is moving on that and people expect to be able to understand what is the situation on the ground and I think it's, you know, can be hard to understand from a distance. Well, I mean, I think it can be really hard and it's hard in this situation because there are First Nations on on both sides of these projects, right? And that is mm-hmm. what we're seeing in a lot of these controversies across the country. And so, you know, as as we were saying from the outside it can be really difficult for people to understand and make sense of that. Um, but I think it's also you know clear that investors want to know whether or not there are first nations or other indigenous organizations that are on side with the project mm-hmm. that people also want to know if there's opposition right yeah. and so that's in part what we objected to this kind of like cherry picking of uh the communities that you're win- willing to mention in the disclosures mm-hmm. you talk about those that are on side with your project but you don't talk about those that are not and that's just not the full story that's the point we're trying